God helps you to trigger conviction in your in your partner. Conviction. Now, conviction is an interesting thing because whenever two people are in a marriage, they are always saying, you did this, you did that. I don't like this. I don't like that. I need you to stop this. Now, your brain tells you to tell them. If they say something that you don't like, you'll figure that if I can tell them over and over again, they'll stop it. If they are lazy, they don't like to um, make their beds, make the bed or cook, or they want to just play games, your, your brain tells you if I can tell them, they're going to stop. But your experience must have told you that they don't stop. It doesn't stop. When you complain about something in your spouse, unless they, there's something new, things like they try to buy you something or things like they, they said something to someone that you don't like, those things can stop. But their habits, characters, attitudes, ideologies, the way they see life, those things don't change so quickly. And no matter how much you tell them, they're not going to change. But if you have God on your side and you start to live the right way, you will inspire that in them. You, the Holy Spirit will work through you to bring conviction to them. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts the world, convicts the Christian also. And conviction is different from condemnation. Conviction tells you you are wrong, you did wrong, but I'm, you are able to do right. This is be, this, you are better than this. You can do it. Go ahead. I trust you. That's what conviction says. It still tells you you've done wrong, but you sense, you feel a sense of hope that you're going to be able to change. Condemnation is the opposite of that. That's what the devil does. Tells you you are wrong and makes you feel that you are useless. It brings shame. That's the that's what the enemy did to Adam in the garden. Once they saw that they were sin, they had sinned, they hid themselves and and they couldn't. They, they were ashamed, right? So that's what condemnation does now whenever you attack your wife or your husband that they didn't do right or you do something like hmm oh why are you so foolish you know that sense you send us that that um body language that why 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 are you so why are you troubling me i'm disappointed whenever we do that what happens is we bring the condemnation to our spouses we are working with the devil we are allowing the enemy to attack our spouse but when you connect with god when you learn how to be connected properly with god what you enjoy is that god will work with you to bring conviction and not condemnation and he will help you also to uh, inspire the right transformation that your husband or wife needs. And finally, he'll protect you from being triggered by the failures of your spouse. Now, when you work on these portions, like I said, three things you need to do. Number one, remove the mask. Remove the mask. Become less and less easily triggered or troubled without uh, anger manage, management courses so that's what we do in that training but this is the training this is what you do there you just learn to be open before god confess your sins to god i did it i said that and the more you confess what it does to you is that it reminds you that you're not perfect and no one else is perfect around you so you find it easier not to get triggered by the mistakes of your spouse Second thing I said is submit totally to God. Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's what that that's what that is about. When you learn to say, I belong to God, I'm going to surrender fully to him, you will begin to enjoy the privilege of being God's property. So when you connect with God, and you surrender to God, and you give Him your body, which is all that you have, really. You don't have anything more than your body on this planet. Your body is your most precious resource. You give it to God and say, God, work with it. He then becomes the one in charge of taking care of it, protecting it, keeping it. So true submission does that. It, it, it opens you up to God's resources, God's wisdom, God's convicting power, God's protective power. And finally, peaceful cohabitation. It means two things. 
Number one, it means that you learn how to deal with everyone at a minimum love level. Love your neighbor as yourself. So you need to learn how to treat everybody like a good neighbor, which means you desire what is best for them. Desiring the best for your neighbor, for your spouse, for your friend, for your brother, everywhere, every day. This is the basic love your neighbor as yourself it has nothing to do with marriage. This will help you notice where there's where there's a problem in your walk with God. If you are a person that says, I have many friends, um, I'm well loved. The only challenge I have is with my spouse. Fantastic. You have, you have, you have one step, which is the peaceful cohabitation part. It means you, you know how to be a friend. We just need you to dial it down. So usually when, what happens when a person is having that kind of a problem is that they are kind to their friends. They are nice to their friends. They are respectful to their friends. But when they get home, they have the wrong expectations and so they are disrespectful to their spouses they are uh, more they are mean they they react so we teach you you need to learn how to treat your spouse at the minimum as a good friend as a good neighbor it's important to learn how to love people like that treat them the way you want them to treat you treat everyone the way you want them to treat you. Don't treat them the way they treat you. That's what most people learn. Uh, oh, he was mean to me, so I'm going to be mean to them. That's not the way of God. The way of Christ, the way of submission to the Holy Spirit is to learn to treat people the way you want them to treat you. Once you've learned how to work properly, in your connection with God, you carry the presence of the Holy Spirit into your marriage and you bring conviction. I have experienced that and I've seen it in the lives of many people around me. When you begin to do the right things, you inspire your wife, you inspire your husband to do the right things. Whenever you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are living in obedience, you're li living in peace and joy in your work with God, you begin to bring God's conviction to your spouse. And the thing that you couldn't do by complaining, the Holy Spirit would do. Now, does it mean that everybody will change? No, not everybody will change. There are some that continue to resist the Holy Spirit regardless of what you do. And in those very rare cases, all we need to do is find out how does God want you to react. There are people who are, who are holding their husbands from pursuing God deeper by their disobedience. You know, you may be surprised that the, the very... Because you complain about your, your husband's spirituality and you nag them and make them look stupid or foolish for not being spiritual, some husbands continue to remain unspiritual. The same with wives. If you're always go, going at, at, attacking them and saying, you're not praying enough, you're not fasting enough, you're not uh, reading your Bible enough, they're going to give up. They're going to feel condemned. And the work of the Holy Spirit that he's doing, you, they, they resist it because they don't want to, to uh, appear as if you're the one that helped them. You're the one that changed them. Nobody wants to be changed by another person. All right. So I want to encourage you to learn how to connect with God. So just pursue God. Show that you love him spend time with him let him correct you when your connection with god is solid you'll be amazed at how your marriage will suddenly start to change without even doing the work we're going to talk about tomorrow if you are also have not downloaded my friendship rebuilding cheat sheet so you want to rebuild friendship in your marriage just like i said that level that top level and you don't know what to do I have a cheat sheet for you. It's a PDF document and it's just one page. You can look at it and it will change. It will remind you of everything that you need to do to rebuild friendship. Uh, and uh, there's a video that's, that comes with that. I want you to go and download it for free. It's aditobanja.com slash friends. Now, when you do that, you also get my email. You can ask me questions and I'll be able to answer you. I, I really congratulate you and uh, I look forward to seeing you um, take more action as you pray.